Alright, so here is the deal. I was going to make a video and I thought to myself, you know what, let me just stop right there and let me just go play Cyberpunk 2077 because you know what, I, I just want to play the game. And I was playing earlier today and I was trying to end up a play session before my game completely crashed on me so I have to go back to that gameplay and figure out where the game crashed and if I have to do this entire uh, brain dance thing again. But anyways, I turn on my PS5 and lo and behold, the game is updating with the 1.04 update right now and i've got roughly like 45 minutes before that finishes updating so hell i'm here making a video because i can't play cyberpunk so yeah um this game probably should have been delayed at least until next year at the very least and if you do not know why i say that then check twitter definitely check twitter because twitter is going off about this game entirely anything from this game giving people seizures which is why they're updating the game right now to take out some of those seizure inducing things in the game and not to mention the biggest thing that I was really confused about, the game runs terribly on the first generation of the PS4 and Xbox One systems. Like if you're playing this game on an eight year old system, eight, seven, whatever the case may be, year old system, you're going to have a terrible time. This shit is very much comparable to PS2 graphics. Yes, PS2 graphics. PS2 graphics sometimes look better than this game does on the original PS4 and Xbox One. And also there's the funny little thing going around on Twitter. I'm not gonna be able to show it in this video, unfortunately, but uh, people's, people's crotches, people's dicks are just coming out of their pants and glitching out of their pants all over the place. And honestly, it's a little bit weird to me because I did go through the character customization. I made myself a female character and I had the option of giving her a little ding dong I, that that is pretty much inclusive and i'm seeing the internet go off about how this game doesn't have as many ding dong options as they would have liked it to have and outside of the fact that the internet can be very very horny at times i'm asking why the hell do y'all care when you don't even see your character in the first place literally outside of your character customization screen and your inventory screen where you actually put on clothes for your character you don't really see yourself like i gave my character this big puffy red hair and whenever i put on a hat it makes the hair go down but i think about it and i'm like why does it matter because i'm not going to be able to see it in the real world anyway like if i walk out onto the streets i'm just not going to be able to see my hair or anything else on me any tattoos scars whatever the case may be it's not going to matter and that leads me into the customization in general because the character customization in this game is very lackluster i thought this game was going to have so many different sliders and different options for how you can make your character kind of like how fallout has it but now it's just a lot of different pre preset options that you can pick from, preset noses and mouths and things like that that really don't give a lot of variety. Especially in the department of having tattoos, I really thought they were going to have a lot more tattoo options and they just don't have a lot at all. But again, it's like, does it really matter? Are they going to update it and add more stuff? Because if they do, it's like you still, you're still only going to see your character in these customization screens. You're not going to see your character in the actual gameplay. And you know what? There's a lot of bad things I could talk about with this game. There's a lot lot of negative stuff that's been going around on the press and and because of that the stock for CD Projekt Red actually plummeted because of this game and that is so funny. It seems like now especially people are not taking these games with glitches very lightly whereas you have games like Fallout 4 or even Skyrim which came out years and years and years ago those games and their glitches they were just something that you expected from games from Bethesda something that was more so meme-ish than anything else but now you have this big highly anticipated anticipated game that we've been waiting eight years for come out and now it has all these bugs and glitches out the ass and it's very clear to me that people are not going to stand for this and they're going to fight back against all these glitches and bugs because hell this game again should have came out next year at the very least and saying that it brings me back to the quote from Shigeru Miyamoto it's a quote that everybody should have seen at least a million and one times before now but obviously a delayed game is eventually good but a rushed game is bad forever and we're going to see this be the trend for cyberpunk going into the future and honestly a segue which is really a really good segue i might add look at a game like no man's sky when that game first came out i bought that game day one and i regretted it immediately that game was so terrible it was so glitchy it was so buggy and the game that they gave us in these trailers and that they showed off to us was just not what we got and it was so disappointing it got 
very bad reviews. But what they did was that they went back and they looked at the game and they said, you know what, we're going to update this thing for free and give it better upgrades and enhancements to make this crappy game into something much better. And lo and behold, years and years later at the Game Awards that literally just happened, they won an award for best ongoing game. They won an award over Fortnite, over Call of Duty, over these big franchises that come out every single year and have very strong games, they won. But the thing is, for people like me, it's still very hard to go back and look at that game because of the bad reputation it left on me as a consumer who bought the game day one and had a terrible experience. And yeah, I get it, the game is much better than it was before, but that doesn't really change the fact that the game that I experienced at first was terrible. And hey, who's to say Cyberpunk 2077, at least about two or three years from now, could be updated to be the most amazing game ever. It could have the best graphics, the best mechanics, everything in the world could just be perfectly polished for this game. But the fact will still stand for those people who bought this game on their Generation 1 PS4, they're going to have this very bad memory about how they first played this game and it was not playable. It was nothing close to what they thought it was going to be. And that is just the bad thing about it and that's why it's pretty funny that their stocks are dropping because hey, you shouldn't release a broken bad game. Sorry, I won't say bad. It's not a bad game. I've been playing it for about two or three hours now. It's not bad so far. I just see where a lot of people are getting these ideas that hey, it's a glitchy mess because like I said, my game crashed. And on top of that, I've seen a lot of graphical errors and glitches and just things that shouldn't have been in this game at launch. So I will say that if you are playing this game on a Series X or a PS5 or even a PC that is, you know, pretty much able to handle this game at high max settings, then Cyberpunk is definitely a game that you want to get yourself into because it's pretty good. But if you're playing on a PS4 or an Xbox One, definitely look into waiting on this one because you might want to step up into something different before you get this game. And again, hey, they could update it to make it so those versions work a lot better, but I'm still saying you probably should wait for some other version of it. And lastly, I really want to point out the fact that it is just so funny how the reviews for this game went down. It was just not okay, and it was a very bad sign from the start. The fact that we had these NDAs, these non-disclosure agreements about, about how outlets like IGN and GameSpot and all these reviewers couldn't show gameplay footage of the game that they're reviewing was very sketchy. Not to mention, most of these reviewers played the game not on PS4 and Xbox One, but actually PC, where the game was definitely better optimized. So not only could these reviewers not get to show off the game for what it actually was and for all the glitches and bugs, but they had to play it on the more powerful system, being a PC of course, and they weren't given the chance to really show off what this game could do at the very minimum settings being on the base PS4 and Xbox One. So I don't know man, that in and of itself is a very shady tactic, something that developers should not be doing because it is a very bad sign and a sign that they are doing something that is highly underhanded. But you know what, that is my opinions, those are my thoughts on it. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to follow me on Twitter and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And that's it for now, so I'll see you guys in the next one.